All right. You bet. I was going to ask you. Thank you, buddy. Thank you so much. No problem. blow my engine once again thank you so much for stopping by now i'm pretty sure most of you guys watched that last video but we made the long trip from michigan all the way down to nevada to deliver the giveaway truck so after we delivered the giveaway truck in nevada we went ahead and went right back to michigan but i did have to make that stop in colorado to drop my brother off unfortunately i didn't make it and I found myself stranded in Eagle, Colorado, but thank God I'm only about three and a half hours away from his house. So bear with me, this video is kind of long, but you may want to watch this from start to finish to get the real story. To give you guys the overall gist on what's actually going on here, my brother's neighbor drove that three and a half hours to us with his Cummins, but unfortunately his gooseneck ball was frozen upside down, so we couldn't get it out, so we couldn't actually rescue ourselves. So he had to drive back. Then we tried something different. My brother called another friend that was, again, three hours out, drove up to us, and his power stroke wouldn't start. But this story even gets crazier. We get pulled over. We had all kinds of issues. To be quite honest with you, I'm not going to pay a tow truck $3,100 to ship my vehicle in my trailer back to my brother's house just so I can try to make it somehow back to Michigan. So this video is going to get pretty intense. Stay tuned, guys. Let's see how I make this one out. Hopefully, we make it out alive. Crackling. Hear that crackling noise? Yeah, don't worry about that. I just spilled some stuff on the engine, but when I was putting that in there. What is that? It's oil. Oh, that's not good. Leaking from the power steering pump. See? Look. It's leaking, it, it blew the seal on the power steering uh, reservoir cap. That's engine oil though, dude. No, that's just the grit and then the oil that mixed in with it. I think. It's very thin, isn't it? That's, yeah, it's red. That's power steering fluid, whatever. But it's like, oh, it looks like it's overfilled. Let me show you, let me show them that. It looks like the power steering is like overfilled, like it's not circulating. See that? And it's like it blew the seal on it. Black smoke. It's coming from the EGR valve. It's just like popping off. It's like plugged up and it has nowhere to go, so it's trying to escape out of the system. That's what's going on right now. I'm gonna let it sit for a few minutes and then I'm gonna check the engine oil. I'm not gonna touch it right now and make sure that I'm not, you know, but I have good oil pressure, but I wanna check my oil as well. Cause I, I hate to blow this engine. This is not cheap to fix, so. All right. Yeah, it just shut off on me. See that? You see that? Yep. Mm. It's like it's trying to piss through the gasket. My, I already did. It's fine. Do you have an excessive amount of blow by? Oh lordy! <laughs> I don't know, Ryan. I didn't pull the engine cap yet. I'll do that. I mean, not that I want to be that guy, but I mean, I'm just trying to think of ideas right now. You know what I mean? Okay, let's try that here for a bit. 
I'm gonna start it. Take the cap, engine cap off. You want me to start it? No, just hold the camera. I got you on camera, right? Yep. What are you thinking? They show, AutoZone shows they have a mass error. Let me see, confirm. I think that was that one that we passed a couple miles ago. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Is it, it's an actual AutoZone that you guys are by? Yeah, I believe so. We saw it on the off the freeway right before this exit. But it looked like it was a couple miles away. Oh, okay. Guys, I'm gonna let the camera run. Um, we're gonna figure this out, so just bear Did with me. Gypsum? Gypsum, yep, Gypsum, Colorado. It's like five miles from here. It says in free in stock or curb pit in store, free in store or curbside pickup, and then it shows that that sensor is supposedly in stock. That's the mass airflow sensor for your truck. Now, if that mass airflow sensor, that won't allow that truck to kick into regen. If nothing else, maybe try calling them and say, hey, look, man, we're broke down. I can give you a card over the phone. Can one of your parts drivers, like, drive this thing to me? You know what I mean? And tell them where you are, and maybe they'd be able to help you out with that, you know? Yeah. Okay. I'll try that, Ryan. Try that. Call me back, all right? All right. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. All right, guys. I'm looking in there. Ryan told me to make sure the turbo wasn't blown up. I can't get my hand in there to check the shaft plate, but it looks fine. Look at this, guys. So the uh, cold side intercooler pipe just popped off. Gosh, I hope that's the only problem. Kind of makes sense. So I wonder if that's been loose the entire time. That's why we've been having all these crazy issues with the uh, DPF and EGR. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that up and uh, see if this fixes our problem. But in the meantime, we already have a mass airflow sensor and route from AutoZone. They're actually driving up here. They're being really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and switch that out since I'm already here. Oh, the oil, this is what I'm thinking. Just trying to, you know, we're, we're spitballing this stuff as we're going, but uh, the, the oil that was going out here makes sense because when the truck turned off and I was just coasting, I was trying to turn the wheel when the truck wasn't running. I was going on a downhill and I added pressure while the truck was off. So when I finally stopped, it started leaking out of the top of the cap. So that makes perfect sense. It was just building pressure inside there. So that's not a huge deal. All right, guys, I just took this off because I dropped my 12 mil half inch socket in there. It's kind of what I had, but um, again, I checked the turbo, I tightened the clamps, everything's good to go. Got to put my intake back on right here. We have a brand new mass airflow sensor, just in case we're already there. We might as well just put it on. So the other one, this that probably wasn't the problem because you know it's gonna throw a code and I know that's very generic, but we're already there, you know? So we put one on there and uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and put the intake on and we'll go ahead and get going. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and kick it into regen anyway so I can blow that, black, or that nasty sud out of the DPF. But uh, yeah, it's gonna sit here and idle like crazy. It's super loud at the gas station. And then we'll go ahead and get back on the road and see what happens. Well, I just hope it's not coming from the engine. It's so, it, it, it's failed. It's so packed up with soot. Dang, I'm like blocked up. I might have an exhaust leak. Hey guys, so I'm stranded, officially stranded. This thing is going nowhere. And the reason for that is because every time I start the truck now, uh, it's actually shooting exhaust from the flange of the downpipe. And it's puffing black smoke out of the back of the DPF. What I'm trying to say, guys, is the DPF is so plugged up that it won't stay running now. See that? Barely starting. Um, runs like crap. All right, guys, it's 2 in the morning. We're trying. We're really trying. Sounds like I'm choking it right now. I'm trying to force the foot out. And I hope this works. I highly doubt it. But guys, bear with me. I know it's dark. Oh, there it goes. Dang it. But when it's running, there's no exhaust coming out of here. It's just so plugged up. And here's the other issue that we're having. This is really bad, guys. Nothing's open. Basically, the gooseneck ball that's on this thing is upside down. And it's rusted right into the hitch. 
receiver. Basically, it's just rusted right in there. We've tried everything. We've banged on it. We've beat on it. We, use, use, we actually use this as a jack. We actually did like a little J hook to try to pull it up. I actually even put a bottle jack underneath to try to push this ball up at the same time beating on it with a hammer. We don't have a torch. Lots of WD-40 we used. Didn't work. Guys, we are stuck like Chuck. Thank God. My brother's got a buddy. He brought his truck over here. Unfortunately, so, you know, we have, we're mobile, but unfortunately, um, we can't get this gooseneck hooked up to his truck because the hitch is stuck in there. There's no way we're going to be able to get that out. We've been trying for hours. It's not going to work, but she's plugged up. So I'm going to get back with you guys, let you know what's going on. All right. Hello y'all. So it's the next day. Well, I, I guess when I was filming, it was the same day, but Joe, what time is it? Like 11? 10 30 in the morning um i don't even know where to start it's just too much talking so i'll just breeze through it really quick so when the truck sits basically it all the pressure just gets relieved out of the any passage it can through any gaskets or whatever so when it sits for a very long period of time the truck will run for about a minute which is awesome uh, it runs like crap but it runs until the dpf and everything that restricts everything backs back up chokes the engine and shuts it off if you were to put your hand behind the exhaust pipe while the truck is running, the exhaust pipe will have no exhaust coming out of it. None. <laughs> You'll feel a little heat, but nothing. So here's the deal, guys. You guys saw that clip uh, whenever, I don't even know, dude, we're not sleeping, but we got lucky. We have another guy coming up, one of my brother's buddies in the army, super cool dude. He's coming up to rescue us three and a half hours out. I hope to God his gooseneck ball isn't stuck like the last one, but we will find out, ladies and gentlemen, and I will record everything and bring you guys along for the journey. We need to get this truck on this trailer without a winch. I think we can do it. I'm literally gonna turn the key, put it in four wheel drive, put it in first gear and just, I mean, I'm gonna get it guys. I'm gonna get it up there safely, but I'm gonna do my best to go fast, you know, not die, but. So yeah, we're in the same exact spot. We're dog tired. We need to take a shower. We need to get home. I need, <laughs> this is nuts. But you know what? It is what it is, right? We're gonna make the best out of it. We're not gonna cry and complain. Hey Joe. <laughs> Think, yeah. You're sticking with me. <laughs> Ride or die. He's like, yep, I got a gas truck. I don't have to worry about none of that nonsense. <laughs> it was funny. I had a Cummins pull up next to me when we were just chilling uh, with a gooseneck. And he was like, you, you guys okay? You guys need help? And I'm like, I mean, not really. He's got a gooseneck, so there's really not much he could do. You know, it's already hooked up to him. But, um, He's like, what's going on? And I'm like, DPF, EGR, plugged up. He's like, I know. He's like, I, I fully understand, man. I, I know the feeling because, I mean, we all share the same crap, you know? But anyways, guys, I'm rambling too much. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm just deliriously tired. But we're going to go ahead and get this truck on the trailer. And Lord willing, this works out. If not, guys, I'm going to, I don't even know what to do. So we're back in, thank God, power stroke to the rescue. But uh, anyway, so it pulled up. Um, it's on the extreme tune. We're definitely not going to keep it on the extreme tune because this is a heavy girl. It's not really good for that. So we went ahead and switched it off to the tow tune. Now the truck won't start. All right. Good old six foot. Yeah. So we're figuring it out right now with the SCT. But yeah. Anyways, that's what's going on right now, guys. We just filled up some diesel. We're good to go there. Now we can't get it to run. Pray for us, guys. Oh, you gotta blow harder. I uh, can't even get under there. We gotta blow this out. <laughs> that was weak. <laughs> it came out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what it was, man. Yeah. Watch, watch. Now, oh, you gotta blow the other side. All right, we're good. <laughs> watch this actually work. That'd be hilarious. I would freaking die. Alright, what's going on? We, 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 load, we loading? We loading? It's working now. Dude! We don't know yet. We're not out of the woods. This, this, dude, this six foe better start. I mean, it made it to 1% before and now it's at 8, so... This is a unit, though, man. Seriously, this is a nice truck. This is a unit. Unit? No. Alright, we didn't get to start. We got it to roll, so we got to get it out of this diesel pump over here. But what we got to do is just keep doing what we're doing and eventually... Yep, we got to keep sending it. It'll get, it'll get going. Been through some stuff in the last, what's it been, like 18 hours now? Yeah, we're getting, we're getting somewhere. And me and Josh have had no sleep, and that's, I think that's really adding to the drive. I actually, like, I, I'm not even tired anymore. 
<laughs> please work, please work, please work, please work. It did it. I don't believe it. It went to 100. Download complete. No, I don't believe it. Tune has been programmed successfully. All right, all right, go. Vehicle turnkey off. Oh, yeah, we got to do that blue stuff. All right, it's going to do it. 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 Come on, girl. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it just shut off. Yeah. I'm looking right now. No, sir. Nothing. Oh. All right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, oh. Yep, shut off again. Yeah, shut off again. Yeah, hold on. Tuning issue, DPF issue. Yeah, dude. Nah, dude. He said you should have bought a Dodge. We're not gonna celebrate too soon, but since last time I turned the camera on, it's been like three hours later. So we're getting something. Can you do that one more time? Dude. Yeah, I don't see any hint of like smoke in there. So guys, basically what's going on is uh, feel the air ratio is a little jacked up because of the injectors. The SCT tuner wants it to be in stock. However, the injectors, I guess, aren't allowing the truck to idle correctly. So, my man over here went on the SET and changed the fuel to air ratio in order to, because we have to run it on stock, in order to compensate for what's going on in this thing. I guess there's a bunch of stuff done to this engine. I don't really know much about. But that's what's going on right now. And it seems like, uh, it seems like we cracked the code here. It seems like we're good, I think. But we're not going to celebrate yet, right? Uh-oh. Clutch is like ridiculous. Six bow. Oh, oh, most reliable diesel to rescue this uh, Duramax. Did it really shift like that, dude? Oh man, we're <laughs> we gotta climb these mountains. We got this. Not a lot of power at all. Really? Oh, versus the last one. Both in stock right now, so. third? No, I'm in third, yeah. I don't think this is going to pull the trailer. Let's just jack that guy. <laughs> Down. Let's ask this dude if he can tilt both of us. <laughs> Alright guys, we're going to hit the highway without a trailer just to see what's up here. Is your foot all the way to the floor, dude? Yeah. Definitely a dog, isn't it? Right. This day just keeps getting better and better. What else is gonna happen today? What do you think? I don't know. Something good's gotta come out of this. I'm just saying, because right now uh, we're stranded in the middle of the intersection. Not even it's not even an intersection, it's like one of those little roundabout turnoff lanes. We're here because again, we're out of we're low on power, we had to pull over, we couldn't go any faster. Uh, we're in first gear and we're trying to climb this up, but luckily the cop, I think he's going to be nice enough to escort us on this side of the highway so we don't die. So yeah. Show them the, the, don't show them the personal information. Why not? Oh, there's an office number. Yeah, call that office and tell them you pulled over. You got a warning. We're not going to show the other side, but you got a warning. You're going to jail, buddy. It's fine. If we roll back, we're going to the pass lane. And if we go out, we're going to stall and get hit and die on the fast lane on this side. And that's what we we're trying to do. So when the cop comes back, he's gonna block traffic for us so we can pull out. Okay. Thank you. Oh. 
70, but it's taking forever to get there. With 17,000 pounds, it's not gonna do it. Yeah, you're going 70, and uh, we're kind of on an uphill. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get back to base here. The gas station, you know, gas station. Snoko or wherever the heck we're going. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and load the tow tune this time and see how that does. And then if that is something that we feel that it can pull this gooseneck trailer, then I think we're good. So, all right. I don't know why this is funny, man. This is not a funny situation, but it is pretty funny. At this point, man, I I don't even know what to say. At this point, it is funny. Um, here, man. You ready? What are we doing? Make sure I don't fall off the trailer because I'm gonna send it, dude. Because this thing doesn't have any power. Moral of the story is, came up here in that to pick these guys up, and that decided to drop a tune. So I spent all day retuning it, and we had a bunch of issues, seal to air, everything was going wrong with it, but. Looking promising, so we're not gonna cross my fingers yet, but it's looking all right. So we're gonna try to, you know, full send this thing up there. All right, so look, lovely man came to help. We're drive, trying to get it on there. Josh. <laughs> Excuse me, please. Right. <laughs> push this dirt turn up here. You know what? We're going to help, boys. Coming to the rescue. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to actually, the winch didn't work either. We made it to the tower. Here we go. How funny is this look, Duramax? Ford, weird, weird. You got my number now. I'm here. Hey, Josh. Yeah. You gotta buy a six four now, buddy. Yeah, I'm gonna buy a six four. Oh, yeah. Come on, man. It's just a DPF. It's plugged up. Okay. It's not the Duramax. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So we are uh, on our way back. It is hailing and thunderstorming. But we're gonna get there, guys. It's a great day. Looking at the windshield, they're about pea-sized tail. Lovely, freaking lovely. That's small, be thankful. Yeah. You're not gonna believe what just happened, y'all. Go ahead, tell them. Dude, we just got struck by lightning. No, well, we didn't, the truck didn't get hit. How's your ears doing? That shit was loud, bro. Yeah. It hit the overpass that we were driving under. Hello? It hit the overpass we were under, and we all freaked out. Dude, it lit, yeah, we're fine. It literally hit the overpass right in front of us. Everything went white, and then it was like, boom. Man, crazy day, or crazy last couple days. We're not homeless anymore. We don't live on the streets. I was able to take a shower, actually shave, you know, I don't you know. Out of the army, we stopped shaving, but you know. <laughs> but guys, now that we're back, again, super excited. We we're able to take a shower. We have to stop actually at a shop. He's got to get a few things and he's got to get some work done because he's behind because he's been hanging out with me in my broken down Duramax. By the way, if you guys are interested in graving work, my brother owns his own business, his own company. Yeah, again, he's got to get back to work. I know we've been busy trying to get things in order in order to get back here but i'm glad we're alive and we're not dead or anything like that so and nothing crazy happened other than what crazy stuff did happen but guys stay tuned and also check him out like i said og engraving and i'll leave his information in the description below do you ship oh yeah everywhere you know what i was thinking about doing i was actually think i've been talking to him about maybe doing like exhaust tips on diesel trucks 
you mm -hmm. know, like putting like Duramax on it, Power Stroke, Cummins, IG name, just whatever. So it's kind of cool. It'd be cool. Maybe they can drop it in the comments, like things that they would like to see on the truck, maybe engraved. Okay, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut it off right now. I got a lot going on and then I'm going to be, uh, I guess, getting it shipped to Ryan's diesel service. We're going to go ahead and tear it down and figure out where all the clumpy nastiness is. And then uh, stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe if you enjoy the content and make sure you follow this because I'm really, I'm pretty sure that all that suds backed up and that's why we had so much pressure. I don't imagine once we drop that exhaust, it's going to look like complete crap. I'm oh, interested to see what it's going to look like. I wish you could come with me, but I know you got to get back to work. So, <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm pretty, pretty backed up now. Sleeping on a park bench for two days. <laughs> like I said, man, things I know things work out for a reason and I'm just glad everything worked out, but that, that was just nuts. I mean, coming from Michigan all the way down to Nevada and then coming back thinking everything was good, mm -hmm. even though we knew we had issues with the truck, but it seemed like everything was running fine. And then for this to happen and guys, you saw that. I mean, like, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm superstitious. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. That sounds crazy. But, dude, our freaking truck almost got smacked with a lightning bolt. <laughs> like, that was nuts. What? Like, this day just can't get any worse, man. But you know what? We made it. So that's all that matters. Big shout out to the guy that brought his 6'4 power stroke out there and saved the day. Got saved by Ford. I'm not even sad. Whatever. <laughs> we'll see you on the next one. Stay tuned. <laughs> I just flew in from Colorado last night. And this truck came in today, so about an 18 hour trip for him. But yeah, I ended up having to pay a hotshot trucker to come out here and deliver my gooseneck and my truck. And it was really nice of him to do that. And again, guys, here we are at Ryan's Diesel Service. Thank God I have good friends. Think the truck might start. We might be able to pull it off the trailer without any issues, but it will eventually die within about 20 seconds. <laughs>